Did you know that there are different painting techniques when it comes to watercolors? Today I'm going to break two popular painting styles down for you so that you feel confident with both. And we're going to paint some lovely sprigs of eucalyptus. mainly on arts like hand lettering, illustration, and watercolors. So if you're into that stuff, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Okay, let's get started. So here we are, a nice blank page. I've got a piece of cold pressed watercolor paper here. And as I said, we're gonna paint some eucalyptus. And I'm gonna take this opportunity to paint two different types of eucalyptus. And I'm gonna paint each sprig using a different technique. I hope you'll find this a very straightforward how-to, perfect for even the absolute beginner. Now the first technique that we're going to talk about is called wet on wet. And it's just what it sounds like. It means putting wet paint on wet paint. So painting on a wet surface. What I'm going to do here is I've got my green paints mixed up there on my palette. And I'm taking a nice big round brush and some clear water and I'm making a circle on the page, and it's puddle wet. Then you can see here, when I take my smaller paintbrush and start adding the green onto the water that I laid down, I get this crazy, out of control, but beautiful feathering. There's all kinds of texture happening, and I can push the paint around, push the water around a little, but in a very real way, I'm not completely in control. And that's kind of what's beautiful about this. And you can add in other colors and they'll sort of sit there or they might uh, splotch out, so to speak. And this is a really fun technique. Uh, wet on wet just means laying down that initial puddle and then adding wet paint on top of more wet paint. And you're really letting the paint do its own thing with this technique. And I think that's what's really cool about it. So now that you know that wet on wet is just exactly what it sounds like, let's zoom in a little closer here so that you can really see what's going on. I'm using my fat round brush to lay down a nice puddle of water, so we would call that puddle wet. And then I'm taking my smaller, I think this is a number four round brush, maybe a number three, and I'm adding this nice cool greeny gray um, to that puddle of water. And the paint is just going crazy. Things are a little hairy <laughs> and it's great. And I'm able to push the paint around, um, just speckle little other colors in there, and I'm just giving up some control here. Now I'll also say a few words about painting the eucalyptus itself. For the wet on wet technique, I've chosen to paint silver dollar eucalyptus. You can Google that. Um, but that's the eucalyptus that has these big round flat leaves that um, are singular. So they each sort of, each stem leads to a big round singular leaf that has a, a little bit of a point at the end. And so this is a fairly straightforward strategy for me here. I'm making these round puddles with my large brush and then I'm going in and just allowing the greeny gray paint to give me this wonderful look of a botanical, of a real eucalyptus leaf. At this point, I'm going to let my wet on wet silver dollar eucalyptus dry and I'm going to move on to the second type of eucalyptus and the second technique. So the second technique is called wet on dry and spoiler alert, it's also just what it sounds like. It means applying wet paint to dry paint. So that begs the question, well, where's the dry paint? Well, that's what we need to start with. We need to sort of do what I would call maybe this isn't quite the right term, but it's sort of an underpainting. It's just the beginning of the painting. So here I'm going to paint some argyle apple eucalyptus, and that's the eucalyptus that's sort of on one stem, and it has these tiny leaves at the top, and they get larger as they go down the stem. And I'm going to just do a very light green, and I'm going to just do my whole painting, but without too much depth or shadow. It's like I'm just doing a very flat painting, and you can see that coming together here. And then once I've allowed this to dry, uh, as in the dry and wet on dry, I'll go back with wet paint, and I'll add that to my initial layer that I've allowed to dry. 
Now that you have an understanding of the idea of wet on dry, let's talk a little about how to paint this second type of eucalyptus, this argyle apple. Basically, this one's all about the size of the leaves. So you just wanna start small at the top and then get slightly larger as you go down. And you sort of have to have an imaginary stem there. Although you could draw this first, but uh, I think it's sort of fun just to paint it and sort of see what happens. And little secret here, you can pretty much make these leaves any shape and it's gonna look like eucalyptus if you stick to that small at the top and larger at the bottom and maybe put a few rounder ones at the bottom. All right, moving on. Now we've got both paintings uh, complete, the first layer complete, and you can see here on the wet on wet that it's still quite wet in some areas. There's a puddle on that one leaf, but it's starting to dry and you're starting to be able to see the cool, um, almost psychedelic puddly look that comes through as the wet on wet technique soaks into the paper and dries completely. And once that wet on wet eucalyptus is dry, I'm gonna consider it complete. It still needs the stem, but otherwise I'm happy with the way it looks. And my second eucalyptus sprig, my argyle apple, has dried in the meantime, and so now I'm ready to do that second layer, to add my wet paint on dry paint. So I've just got a bit of a darker green, just a hair darker. These um, differences in color do not need to be dramatic. In fact, I think the more subtle, the more sophisticated look you're gonna get. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to add a little bit of depth um, and shadow to my eucalyptus leaves as if they're sort of wrinkled, not wrinkled, but sort of um, curved, uh, which they are, of course, like any leaf. So just adding that little bit of darker greeny gray to really bring these leaves to life. And for the round ones, which are sort of flat on at the viewer, I'm just giving them a little bit of darkening at the bottom to just you know, as a leaf would be. It would be different colors in different places. So, um, and this is quite simple. I'm just using a little bit of a darker shade and just, um, you know, taking my time and thinking about where I want to apply it. So you have a lot of control with this technique as opposed to the wet on wet where you sort of have to give up that control. So with the two paintings done, I am ready to add the stems. And the key with the stems is to keep the brown very cool, the color very cool brown, and the stem itself very, very thin. So here I've mixed up some watercolor paint, brown with a lot of purple and blue and black in it to keep it cool. And then I'm doing this very almost pencil thin line. So just using the point of the brush. And of course the silver dollar eucalyptus has uh, a middle stem and then these little tiny branches that reach out to each leaf. And then the argyle apple just has one stem going right through the middle. Anytime you're painting botanicals, you want to have an image or the plant itself nearby to look at. And it's not so that you can capture its likeness perfectly. You can do whatever you want, abstract it, represent it, any which way. But what you want to do is capture some of the plant's unique features so that your viewer knows that it is in fact eucalyptus. And in this case, the unique feature is the stem that goes straight versus the stem that has the little uh, twigs going off of it. All right, painting complete. I think at this point you can really see the differences in the two techniques. Of course, the wet on wet has this crazy feathering and a great variation in color. And then the wet on dry on the right, you've got all this detail and depth. And I would be a very bad teacher if I didn't mention that you can of course combine these two techniques and um, you can start with a wet on wet, wait for it to dry, and then add all your tiny details and shadow and whatever else you want by um, painting on it once it's dry. So I hope you've enjoyed learning to paint these two different types of eucalyptus, the silver dollar and the argyle apple, and I hope that you feel you've got a handle on these two very different, but both very fun watercolor techniques. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. Remember, there are links to all of the supplies used in today's video in the description box. And please remember to subscribe and like and leave me a comment. And I'll see you Friday with a new tutorial.